Buenas noches, Wilmer, ¿todo bien? Okay, um, hello, good evening to everybody. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay, yeah, perfect. So, um, and good evening. Welcome, everyone. So, um, today we're going to start a, a working an activity. I will share to you. Uh, have you ever worked? I don't know if um, if you have ever worked um, the word search. You know what are those? Yes. Yes. Okay. Perfect. So, um, I'm going to share a link right now to, uh, about the word search. This is just to practice some vocabulary. Give me just one moment. While I just share this word search to you. One moment. Let me verify here. Okay, here we have, um, there you have uh, the link. You're going to have the link here in the chat box, okay? Um, if you can share this link um, there in the WhatsApp group, that will be amazing, okay? Uh, just let me share my screen. One moment, please. Let's see this. <laughs> Teacher. Can you hear me? Yes. Is I do. <laughs> I do say in Spanish. Eh, la actividad que dejó anoche era un enlace y se tenía que rellenar, pero se tenía que mandar por eh, porque ahí dice como terminar y como enviar. Sí, así es. Ajá, pero no, yo la intenté anoche, lo intenté ahora y, y no lo pude enviar, sincera, o sea, enviarlo. Ah, vaya, vaya. Creo que este hubo, sí, sí, ya le comprendo. Este, ajá, el... ya, y lo... ajá, uh -huh. entonces no la pude. Vaya. O sea, de hecho se le borra uno y lo vuelve a hacer y entonces no se Sí, puede, es que no sucede, lo... sucede este, algo, Ángela. Creo que, que hubo tal vez una pequeña confusión este, en parte, mis disculpas si no, si no me, di, me di a entender este, eh, bien. Um, a la hora de enviar eh, la actividad este, del, 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 perdón, sí, el workshop um, que ustedes tenían asignado, simplemente era utilizar el botón que decía check my answers y automáticamente les iba este, a mostrar un resultado. Ese resultado este, que les mostraba le iban a tomar una fotografía, una captura de pantalla y esa era la evidencia que ustedes iban a enviar al grupo de WhatsApp. Eh, sí. No iban a enviarlo a ningún este, correo electrónico, simplemente era eh, revisar, pues, que la respuesta, eh, revisar el resultado que este, hayamos en, obtenido en, ese, eh, en esos ejercicios y, eh, y tomarle captura. Exactamente, eso era de, todo. Ah, vaya, este, ah, pues sí, eh, de hecho yo tuve 7 de 10. Uh -huh. Ajá, tenía que mandarlo al grupo, ¿verdad? Sí, exactamente. Una este, captura de pantalla o una fotografía con eso. Pues, Ajá, ah, ok. Para poder este, y, tener la evidencia. ¿Y todavía lo puedo enviar? Claro que lo puede hacer. Ok, muchas gracias, Fischer. Bueno. 
Ok, déjenme compartirles ahorita este, este recurso, si lo puedo compartir. Uh, permítanme, función. Aquí. Aquí está. Vamos a moverlo. Eh, Pueden visualizar lo que les estoy compartiendo en. Eh, 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 sí. Sí, okay. So, um, this is a message that is about occupations. Uh, what I want you to do right now is to uh, work on it. Um, this is going to be a, an individual activity. And after you finish this, um, this word search <laughs> as the same activity that it's supposed to work going, the, the we're going to send. Um, the, the evidence uh, through WhatsApp group. So it's gonna be the same. You're going to take a screenshot or you're going to take a photo of time that you spend uh, solving this um, word search, okay? Eh, simplemente es, eh, va, este, este ejercicio es para trabajar un poco este, el vocabulario, ¿sí? Y trabajar un poco también este, la habilidad de poder identificar palabras. Eh, una sopa de letras pues en sí um, simplemente para tener la evidencia de que hemos trabajado este ejercicio vamos a hacer eh, vamos a utilizar la misma dinámica del día de ayer una vez terminemos nos muestra un resultado que en este caso van a ser los segundos que usted este invirtió resolviendo el ejercicio y ese esa ese puntaje ese eh, tiempo que usted invirtió que se muestra en, en un cuadro diferente este es el que va a enviar al grupo de WhatsApp y con eso usted ya tiene la evidencia de que trabajó. ¿De acuerdo? Ese okay, lo vamos a hacer okay. ahorita. Es, es, eh, es una actividad de introductoria. Ok. Lo vamos a hacer ahorita, Tichi. Sí, ahorita. Ok. Vamos, vamos a tener 10 este, minutos. Si en 10 minutos no lo hemos terminado, este, vamos a regresar a la, eh, a la videoconferencia. Pues, si vamos a tomar la clase y luego usted lo puede este, realizar si gusta, pero este, el objetivo es terminarlo en menos de 10 minutos. ¿Alguien tiene alguna consulta de momento? Eh, yo, teacher, este, el ejercicio, ¿dónde está? Perdón. Eh, en el chat box de Zoom. Ok, gracias. No sé si alguien me hace el favor de, por favor, compartirlo al grupo de WhatsApp. Creo que ahí también es mucho más fácil luego para, para acceder a él. ¿Alguien tiene el WhatsApp web activado? Sí, sí, sí. Muchas uh, gracias, Ángela. Sí. En el WhatsApp, ¿verdad? Sí, en el WhatsApp. Oh, no. De momento, ¿alguien ha tenido algún inconveniente para acceder al recurso? No. 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 Bueno, excelente. Perfecto.
Perfecto, Perfecto. excelente. Sí, 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 sí.
Okay, okay, um, time is over. Uh, any of you have already finished this uh, exercise? Yes. Is it difficult or is it was easy? It was easy. It was easy. Um, okay, okay, perfect. So, uh, well, I was just very funny here. Um, give me just one moment. Let me see who was the first one that sent. Just check. Okay, Edgardo. Uh, okay, perfect. You just did 312 seconds. Very good. The second one, I'm very funny here, 352. Um, Listed the same 352 and let me see Lorena 542 okay perfect guys so uh just send the evidence there in the whatsapp group so and and there will be just uh, taking notes of the all people that are uh, working on the <laughs> exercises that i'm sharing to you so um we're going to start uh, yesterday i remember that we we're discussing about the uses of relatives mm -hmm. Um, what do you remember about that? I want to start with that question. Um, what do you remember about um, the use of related sentences? Who? Okay, go ahead, ma'am. Teacher. Uh, yesterday, I wasn't able to be in the class but i have uh -huh. i i saw the class uh, today in the video uh, but i have some i have a question about the about what you talk uh, about yesterday okay tell me uh, could it be a per person uh, could a person be offended or, or feel offended if if we say that instead, who? Um, no, sir, because uh, that is, uh, well, in this case, uh, more general. general to, uh, so it, when, when we use that, it is for general uses. You can use it uh, for people, uh, you can use it for uh, animals and things. It, no, well, in English, I guess if you use that, nobody's going to be offended. Because if you use that that word, because it's like a general use of it. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> for instance, uh, the, and I, I something popped up to my mind when um, you said that someone can get, get can be offended using that word. Probably, if we use the word which. In that way, yes, because which is only used for animals and um, animals and things. So uh, instead of using who, and if you use which, then yes, someone can be offended. But with that as general, okay? And you don't have to worry about that. Okay, um, just let me share my screen here. Uh, oh my God, what happened? Just one. I, I just need to log in to the platform. Okay. Just let me share here. The here. This and this. Okay, perfect. 
Um, okay, there we have a um, pre-advanced pre model one. And when we're just checking, that's what friends are for. Section number one. And here we have a related pronouns as subjects. Um, yesterday we were discussing that um, we can use related pronouns as subjects and, and also we can use related pronouns as, as objects. Um, well, if yesterday also we were discussing about the uses of um, the related clauses. Um, usually when we want to add information, we want to join two different informations. Uh, we are referring to the same person, to the same animal, to the same thing. Uh, so we can include that information just in one sentence. One sentence is gonna be like the main clause, like the, the main sentence, uh, and the other one's gonna be uh, the supported sentence or, uh, well, the it, it will be the dependent sentence because uh, when we say dependent, it's, it's just because uh, that information's, uh, the, those, or the information that we are referring to um, it's gonna be a, just an extra information in order to clarify something. For instance, uh, we have the first sentence that it says, I like guys. In the second sentence, it says they are anti serious. So we have two different sentences here. If we want just to join this information uh, using related sentence, what we have to do is just to include um the relative uh, clause in this case it's gonna be like i like guys who or that are in two series both of them are possible if you want to express something um also uh, if we have a relative pronouns as objects uh, and we have the one of the examples here it says i prefer someone i can talk I prefer someone, a period, okay? And the second sentence is going to be, I can talk to him easily, okay? I prefer someone and I can talk to him easily. If you want to just work uh, or uh, inform about this uh, information that we're stating here in, in these two sentences, we can use relative clause too. Um, for instance, we can say, I prefer someone who or that I can talk to easily. Uh, basically, what we are doing here is just replacing the subject, um, in this case, the, the, the noun that we're referring to. Um, yesterday, we also were sharing some information <clears throat> about the uses of the word who. Um, do you remember the, the, the two other words that we were discussing yesterday about the... Um, about the, the, the word who? I have a question. Okay, go ahead. As I understood yesterday, who is, who is, is for people. And I thought that that was for objects. Um, I don't, no, no, I don't, I'm not when understanding I... right. No, uh, well, whose is when we want to express something about someone, but in a possessive form, okay? Um, it's no for objects. It's uh, just like, um, it's kind of similar when you use the, the possessive pronouns, like my, like yours, like oh. his, her. Okay, you are referring that something belongs to someone. That's the uses of whom. It's, it's like kind of the similar use of, of those uh, pronouns. And what about whom? Whom is when we um, use it for um, an object form. Okay. Um, when, uh, for instance, when you're referring to, uh, to someone and you use a um, the word whom, you are replacing uh, the noun of the first subject in order to express something that um, that you or someone else did to someone, okay? Uh, whom is like, uh, it, it is just only like in the, if we say in, 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 a, in a different way, like, in a complement of the sentence. 
Okay, so in that way, for instance, I have a, a, an example here that, that it says, uh, the witnesses whom I interviewed gave conflicting evidence. So that this is um, this is a, a, an example. So if you want, uh, it's, it's going to be so much better if I write it down here in the, in the whiteboard. Give me just one moment. Okay, let me just share this whiteboard here. Witness whom I gave me conflicting. Okay, like that. Uh, this must be capital letter. Okay, can you see the, the sentence that I wrote here? Yes. yes. Yes, I can see it now. Okay, perfect. Thank uh, you. Just it's like when you say whose is the can and whom is a can. Yes, but 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 I um, but, but I have something here. Just take a look of this. Um, uh, we are referring to witnesses. Uh, what happened here? So can you please just identify something particular in, in, in this uh, subject? I interviewed them. Um, yes, it's gonna be um, like the the relative clouds, okay? But um, I just want to, what I want you to explain you here is that whom it is used when we are going to introduce a object form, okay? Uh, when I've referred to object form, I mean like the complement. That, that's another way to say, to say uh, the complement of, of a sentence, okay? So whom, but also, uh, we have to um, we have to 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 use it just when we have a a plural noun, okay? So because we are referring to the witnesses, because this is plural, I'm not going to use who, like in a Spanish, like it's gonna be like a quien, right? Who? So what is the one that we use for plural? That's gonna be whom, okay? But okay. It's, it's for people oh, uh, always. Who, whom, and whose is gonna be when we refer to people. The, the only thing that here with whose, um, like, like the situation that happened with who is, we refer uh, to, or we use, we use whose when we refer that something, okay, belongs to someone. Okay. okay. The, this is la, uh, por ejemplo, este, cuando nosotros utilizamos la palabra whom, este, hacemos referencia a um, algo, o sea, se utiliza con cosas, pero que tienen una pertenencia, que en este caso sería una persona. No sé si me doy a entender de esa forma. Sí, sí. Yes. Okay. okay, very good. So, uh, this is like the uses of, well, the, the, the three different uses of who. Okay, who, the, it's when you refer to, to, to someone in singular, who is used, is used when you refer to someone in plural and also start with an object form, like if you start in, in like the complement of this, of a sentence and using a, a, as relative, a, as you can see here and also a, a, when we use whose, so that's mean that we are just talking about the possessive form of the um, pronoun who. Okay, in this case, because we are using who uh, as pronouns, no as uh, um, as a WH question. So that's something that I have to clarify there. Okay. Um, also, yesterday, just let me verify something else. Okay, I, I guess that's all um, about the relatives. 
Um, let me just verify something else. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I guess that's all. Can you give us an example with who's? Who's? Of course. Just let me write it down here. Yes. Um, okay. Okay. It's going to be like, uh, I want to write this. The dog, okay, who's owner? Mm, dog who's owner lets it translucent. Okay, let's okay. an accident. Okay, there, there you have, like the dog who's, this who's is replacing, uh, as you can see here, to someone. But uh, when we use who's, that's mean that um, this is used for a possessive form. What is the possession of that, of that person? The dog. Please, the dog, right? So the dog belongs to someone. Yes. So, in that case, we use who's for a possessive form. And the sentence says, the dog whose owner lets it run, lose, make house an accident. Okay? So there you have. So th this is the sentence. I don't know if you can see here in. in... Yeah, thanks. Okay, perfect. Give me. I I'm going to stop sharing in the whiteboard because I need to share something else here. In, in the platform, okay? One moment, please. And this, this, and also this. Okay, we are going to move on. Um, it says, um, the lesson number two, um, it says, by the end of this lecture, participants will be able to use relative pronouns who and that as objects. Uh, we have already discussed this, but uh, we are going to use we are, I mean, we are going to watch the video um, in order to identify um, some other examples of it. Then we are going to move to the lesson number three. And just pay attention to this part. Um, and let me know if you cannot hear the audio of this video, okay? Hello, everyone. In this class, you learn how to describe the kind of people you like to hang around with. For example, I like friends who aren't too serious. You'll learn how to use the relative pronouns who or that. Now, let me get started by presenting the structure. We'll do a few examples, and at the end of the class, I would like for you to practice by making your own examples. Let me talk about the first example that you see here, relative pronouns as subjects. So, in essence, what we want to do in this class is we want to take two pieces of information. For example, I like guys. They are into serious. That's the second piece of information. And what we want to do is we want to combine these two pieces of information. And we do this by using the relative pronouns. We're either going to use who or that to combine those two pieces of information. So at the end, what the sentence is going to look like is, I like guys who aren't too serious. Or you could say, I like guys that aren't too serious. I'm going to write down those examples to make sure that we're understanding the process. The first example states, I like guys, they aren't too serious. And what we do is, if you notice in gray up here, and I actually colored that in blue in the bottom, because that's what I want to focus on. Okay, um, well, I was just verifying something here and it just 
taking a look of the uh, of the title of this uh, video and it says uh, relative pronouns as ob it's supposed that must be relative pronouns as objects and what we're seeing here and i and i just uh, yeah, what to Monday yesterday? What we were watching this video and saying, and the ones that wrote me here in the chat box was right. We already yes, I saw it them too yeah. many times, and it's the same. <laughs> yeah, it's the same, right? Because yes. um, I don't know why, but suppose that must be relative pronouns as objects, and here we have relative pronouns as uh, subjects. Just let me verify if if it is the same here. Yes, I see. Okay. There is a video that is missing here, and I and I realize I realized that it was now the, the second video because um, I, I was just checking that they, the the man was using the same example that yesterday. Okay, my apologies for that inconvenience. I will report that to the staff of English Cooperative, and they, they will try to solve it as soon as possible. Okay, don't worry. Um, uh, but uh, as you know, we have already discussed about relative clauses. So this is just, uh, as I said before, an additional information uh, here. Um, and the examples, uh, it's going to be like the same, like the ones that I was explaining uh, yesterday. Let's join in two different sentences with who or that. OK, so. Um, in the section number, I mean, in the lesson number two, you're going to have a, an activity that it says, select the best clause that matches the statement. Um, there you have, I, I don't want to have a partner. Um, so you're gonna identify which is the correct um, clause here, the, the best uh, clause here, okay? Uh, but this is an activity that you have to develop by your own. We're going to move to the lesson number uh, three, and it says, uh, by the end of this class, participants will learn adjectives that describe personal characteristics. Okay, uh, what do you know about adjectives? What do you know about adjectives? Do you know adjectives what adjectives are, are the ones that uh, do we use for Describe an, an, an subject. Okay, good, good definition. So it is a word that we use to describe the subject. Very good. What else? Anyone else? Thank you, Lorena. Anyone else? What are um... an adjective is what we say about the subject. Okay, very good. Give me just one minute. I, I just had to blow in my computer because uh, the battery is just down. Give, give me just one minute, okay? I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. Um, okay, here we have, um, we're discussing, uh, well, you were saying that uh, an adjective is a word that describes the subject. And, and just let me tell you that you're right. Okay, that's what an adjective is. So um, in, in English, we have like different uh, kind of adjectives, okay? So, and also we have different groups of adjectives and well, in order to study all of them, we're going to have enough time in order to do it. But we're going to start with this one, uh, with this uh, group of adjectives that are called adjectives for personalities. Um, then we have a question that it says, what are they like? Okay, what are we going to do here? Oh, uh, what can oh, oh, what can you identify here in these um, sentences? Because we we have a, here in this video different uh, questions. For instance, I can read the, the first one. Of this with this um, which statement best describe Andrea? 
Okay, but we wanna see this first. Give me just one moment. Okay, just let me play here. The second one, it says, which statement best describe James? Which statement best describe Mr. Johnson? All the sentences here are um, used, okay, in order to express an specific adjective that describes the personality about someone. You can identify the structure there and it says Andrea is someone who is a, a gothic out or a sting, okay? So there you have those adjectives. We have sociable or is it going? And, and the second, the third one here, and then we have the, the, the rest of the uh, sentences you're just uh, checking here in this video. Okay. Uh, first of all, in order to identify and, and answer all those questions, we need to um, check the audio and, and also we need to play the video here. Um, give me just one moment. Let me see if I'm sharing the, the, the audio. Okay, good. So I'm, what I'm going to do right now is to play this video and we are going to be identifying, um, well, which is the best um, statement for each question, okay? Just pay attention. Hi everyone. By the end of this class, you'll learn adjectives that describe personal characteristics. And you'll listen to an audio program in which you'll identify the adjectives that best describe each individual. So let's get started by learning the adjectives that you see before you. I'll be making this document available so you can have it for reference. Easygoing. An easygoing person is someone who doesn't worry much or get angry easily. Egotistical. An egotistical person is someone who has a very high opinion of himself or herself. Inflexible. An inflexible person is someone who doesn't change easily and is stubborn. Modest. A modest person is someone who doesn't brag about his or her accomplishments. Sociable. A sociable person is someone who enjoys being with other people. Stingy. A stingy person is someone who doesn't like sharing. Supportive. A supportive person is someone who is helpful and encouraging. Temperamental. A temperamental person is someone who has unpredictable or irregular moods. Unreliable. An unreliable person is someone who doesn't do what he or she promised. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to listen to an audio program at this time. And as I mentioned, we need to be familiar with these adjectives in order for us to answer the questions from this audio program. What we're going to do in this audio program is we're going to listen to a description of Andrea, James, and Mr. Johnson. And then what I would like for you to do is to choose the best statement that describes each individual. So let's listen to that audio program at this time. So have you seen Andrea lately? Yeah, I see her once in a while. How's she doing? I've been meaning to call her. Well, to be honest, she's kind of been getting on my nerves lately. What do you mean? She's changed a lot since we've started college. She talks about herself all the time, and she always manages to mention how good she is at everything she does. Really? That would be annoying. It is. You know, she asked me to be roommates with her next semester, but I don't think I want to live with her. She used to be really generous, but now she's just the opposite. And it's not just with money, but her time as well. Well, college can be stressful. You two are good friends. Maybe you need to talk more. Okay, um, do you listen to that audio, right? Um, there we have a, the three different themes that says Andre is someone who is egoistic and stinky. Uh, we have Andre is someone who is social and is it going. Andre is someone who is temperamental and unreliable. So according to your um, uh, own understanding, your own understanding here about this audio, which is the best answer for the first question? 
I think that Andrea is egotistical and stingy. Yes. That's right. Yeah, right? Yes, yes, correct. Very good. So we're going to continue with the second one. Are you going to James's party on uh, Jensen? Do you have any question? Jensi? I'm just seeing that you have your hand raised. Is everything okay? Okay. Saturday? Of course. James always gives the best parties. And there are always lots of interesting new people to meet. It's true. I don't know where he manages to find them all. Well, you know what he's like. He makes friends very easily. He really likes talking to people. And he loves inviting people over. Uh-huh. He invited me for dinner last Saturday. What a feast. Yeah. He's a great cook, too. After dinner, I offered to help clean up. And he told me not to worry about it. He said he'd take care of it later. He was like, it's nothing, no big deal. Yep, that sounds like James. Okay, number two. Did you have the sentences? James is someone who is sociable and easy going. Okay, very good, amazing. Let's listen the... Um, have you met the new apartment manager? Mr. Johnson? Yeah, I met him last week. He's a little strange. Yeah, he is. I'm not sure I like him. He's hard to predict. Sometimes he's pretty cheerful and talkative, and the next day he doesn't even say hello. I think he must have personal problems or something. I think you're right. And have you noticed that half the time when he says he's going to do something, he never actually does it? He told me three times he'd come to fix the light in my kitchen, and he still hasn't done it. Okay, the last part. So? Jesse, go ahead. Uh, Jesse, you're on mute. You, you need to uh, turn on your microphone. Edgardo, go ahead. Uh, Mr. Johnson is temperamental and unreliable. Okay, very good. Mr. Johnson, someone who is, in, uh, who is temperamental and unreliable. Very good. Mason, uh, good answers there. Uh, we're going to discuss. Uh, I don't know if you check the the image that I, um, I share here in the WhatsApp group. I don't know if you have already seen that. Yes, it's about personality traits. Hello? No, I'm, I'm... Just, just verify the WhatsApp group because uh, there I share an image about personality traits. Or probably, just let me verify. Yes, yes, I did. Can you please just go to the WhatsApp group and verify? I don't have it. You don't have it, no. Lorena? No. no. Right now, yes. Right now. Personality traits. Yes. Uh, that's... Yellow one, yeah. Yes. And what about the rest of you? Okay. Uh, if you if you have that. Um, that image, what we are going to do right now, is to choose two different personality traits, two of them. And what you're going to do is to research about uh, the meaning of it. And um, when after you have the meaning of it and, and you identify what is this personality trait about, you are going to share to uh, the rest of the group, the ones that you have already the, the information that you already get from the internet probably, because this is the, 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 the one of the resources that we have in order to research. And um, you have, you have 
um, to include one sentence as an example of it. Okay, this is what you're going to do. Choose two different personality traits. Uh, probably, uh, um, for instance, uh, someone can use just um, in a, a check and, and say, okay, I'm going to research etiquette and also a uh, charming, okay? So if you decide etiquette and charming, go to uh, Google and Google it, okay? And identify what is this about, okay? Take note of this and write down one example, just one example for each one. One for ethical and the other one for uh, charming. Uh, this is just an example, right? Uh, so, solamente es un, un ejemplo de, de lo que ustedes van a hacer. Eh, van a seleccionar dos palabras, van a investigar de qué se tratan, eh, van a escribir una oración en el cual se utilice esa palabra y al finalizar, cuando ya tengan esa información, lo que van a hacer es compartir con, eh, con, con el resto del grupo de qué trata este, la, el personal el traits y el ejemplo que ustedes este, han, han creado. ¿sí? No sé si me doy a entender qué es lo que vamos a hacer ahorita. Yes. Yes. Sí. Bueno, para que se les facilite, este, eh, les decía que ustedes pueden eh, utilizar eh, el recurso pues, que, que tienen en la mano ahorita, que es eh, en internet. Eh, pueden ingresar a la página de Google, ahí pueden escribir la palabra, pueden ver de qué se trata. Luego vienen, lo explican a, en, en, a, en la videoconferencia principal, dan el ejemplo y listo. ¿Ok? Hagamos eso ahorita. Tienen este, cinco minutos y comenzamos. Oh, vaya, estoy revisando aquí y este es ya las eh, cuatro minutos a las nueve. Vaya, vamos a dejar pendiente esta actividad para el día de mañana, este, eh, porque no nos da el tiempo. Eh, hagan este, esta actividad y mañana antes de iniciar ustedes deben este, explicar sobre qué trata eh, el adjetivo de personalidad que ustedes seleccionaron. Seleccionen este, dos de ellos, ¿sí? Cada quien va a seleccionar, esperaría yo que seleccionara uno diferente. Si coinciden, son varios, veamos, son aproximadamente 15, 30, son 60 aproximadamente. Dos, cuatro. Sí, son más de 60 este, eh, adjetivos. Así que que coincidan va a ser... Eh, Casi improbable, sí. diría yo. They are 80. ¿Hola? They are 80. 80. Ya. Yeah. Ah, vaya. Entonces, este, seleccionen dos de ellos. De 80, que todos escojan el mismo, creo que va a ser un poco improbable. Así que este, lo voy a dejar a su criterio. Elijan los que ustedes consideren este, más convenientes de investigar. Traen información para el día de mañana. Y traen un ejemplo por cada uno de ellos. Un ejemplo me refiero, o sea, una oración en la que nosotros utilicemos ese adjetivo. ¿De acuerdo? Sí. ¿Sí queda claro lo que vamos a hacer? Esta es una actividad de speaking, así que deben venir preparados para el día de mañana. Porque me van a explicar de qué trata el adjetivo. Así como, eh, digamos, quiero compartirles mi pantalla por última vez. Eh, así como este, visualizamos nosotros... Estas definiciones. Aquí nos aparecen ya definiciones bien precisas de lo que es. Lo que yo necesito que haga es que ustedes investiguen esta definición y la expliquen este, al resto de sus compañeros. Como será, van a ser dos eh, adjetivos, pues que lo más que se pueden tratar explicando y dando el ejemplo serían dos, tres minutos. ¿De acuerdo? ¿Estamos? Sí. Yes. Sí, yes, okay. ok, muy bien. Entonces, okay. ¿alguien tiene alguna consulta? No, teacher. Ángela, no. Bueno, ¿De acuerdo? Thank you. Ok. ¿Larena? No, it's okay. Tampoco. ¿Edgardo? No. Todo bien. Chévere. ¿Alguien más? Bueno, de acuerdo. Este, el silencio, pues, me da a entender de que no hay preguntas. 
Déjeme ver por aquí qué sucede. José dice o dice que, ok, perfecto. Bien, entonces nos estaríamos viendo, la, la hora pasa pues prácticamente volando, chicos, así que, este, eh, bueno, desearles una este, muy feliz y bendecida noche. Nos vemos el día de mañana. Descansen y eh, recuerden, la videoconferencia siempre inicia a las 8 de la noche. Cuídense, bendiciones a todos. Buenas noches. Good night. Good, night. Good night. Good night. Have a nice night. Good night. Blessings to all of you. Good night.